Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use Expo Secure Store to store key values that you need to be stored encrypted on your device. Um, and the good thing about it is if you actually delete the app and reinstall it, it's actually going to um, bring back those um, keys that have been stored in the Secure Store. So you're going to want to install Expo Secure Store and um, import from that NPM package. First off, I'm just going to create a function for just saving a secure um, value. It's asynchronous because saving is going to be asynchronous. So I'm going to just do an await secure store dot set item async and that's going to save the item and I'll pass in a key and a value. This could be useful if you've got something to save like um, the JWT token that's returned from authentication. So anything sort of sensitive to store could be stored in secure store. I'm also going to import a text input and use state because I'm going to have a text input to get the key and value to save. So I'm creating my state variable here, which is a key. I'm going to use state and set that to undefined so that the text input starts empty. I'm going to do the same thing for a value. So I've got my state variable of value and my setter function for that set value. When I call set value, it's going to re-render my um, components. You can see that I took out the parameters of that save secure value function because it's actually going to come from the state variables instead. So text input's going to have a value that's going to be the key. And when the text changes, I'm going to call set key. So I'll pass that as that function to the text input. I'm also going to put in a placeholder just so people know what to enter in there. I'm just going to specify that it's the key. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the value. So it's going to be set, va um, set value and the value will be the value. I'll also want to update that placeholder to be value so that the user knows what to enter in there. And then I'm going to need a button. So the button's going to allow someone to call that save secure value function, which will um, save the key and value in the secure store. So on press, I'm going to call save secure value. You can see I've got a key and value text input and a save key and value button now. So let's enter a key and a value. I'm just going to call it my key. Oh yeah, another thing I want to do is that when I save it, I'm just going to set the key and value back to undefined so that it's clear that it's actually worked. And I'm going to set that value to, and I'll click on save key and value. Oops, I didn't save that, so there we go. So it's cleared out now, and because I've now got some secure values, I can actually work on getting those values back. So I'm going to create a new function, retrieve secure value. It's going to work much like the um, save secure value, but instead of saving, it's going to retrieve a value from the secure store using a key. So I'm going to go secure store dot get item async and I'll pass in that key value. And then that will get the value back. I'm then going to go ahead and update the value text input so that we can sort of see what the result would be. 
this isn't really how you'd use it in an actual application. Um, you wouldn't be just setting values in a text input, but it's a good way of showing you how to write the code for saving and retrieving a key and value with minimal UI effort. So this one's going to have a button for and a on press it's going to call retrieve secure value. So if I save that, it, you can see that button shown up and when I click it, it sets that um, retrieve value into that value text input. And I can update both fields and save them if I wanted to. Another thing you can do is you can actually specify that you want the user authenticated to make changes. So you can specify that you want um, authentication. And you can also specify an authentication prompt. So my, this is what I think it should be doing. I think it should load that up and try to get you to authenticate. Um, the reality when I tried it is that it actually just works without it. And I don't know if that's just because I'm already logged in. So if someone knows in the comments, please drop a comment on why. Um, but I'll also help you fix up this issue. So it says you must set this NS face ID usage description in your info P list. Um, so I need to go and make that change before I can actually um, save an item using authentication. So yeah, I can go ahead and solve this problem for you. It doesn't work as I'd expect. So if anyone knows how it should work when you're wanting authentication, please do let me know in the comments. I think it'd be useful for anyone following along. But basically I'm adding a plugin section that will allow for, um, authentication using Face ID. I'm then going ahead and doing my build configuration, but because I was missing some dependencies, it prompted me to install those, so I installed those. Now it's going ahead and configuring my build config. You can see that I've got an eas.json now that's been created there. That's my build config. For iOS, I'm just going to set simulated tr to true so that when I um, do my development build, I can open on the simulator. Now I'm installing Expo Dev Client. I'll need that to be able to open my standalone app on my simulator. And then I can go ahead and build my app for iOS. I'm also going to add a delete key option. And that's because um, I want to be able to show you that you can um, delete keys and also um, when you uninstall the app if you haven't deleted a key it will still exist so to delete a key it's pretty similar to getting and retrieving you're just doing the secure store dot delete item async and you're passing in the key that you want to delete I'll add a new button for that And I'll set that on press function to be that delete key function. Cool, so I've retrieved the value for my key. And I'm just going to start up this app again once again just to show you. 
so I can get my changes of the delete button. So I'm going to retrieve my key and then I'm going to choose to delete that key. I didn't choose the set to set the key and value to undefined using that um, state setter function. So I'm just going to add those in. That will make it um, appear to the user if it's as if it's been deleted. So it will give better user feedback. But if I go ahead and try and retrieve the value, you could see that nothing came back. Now I'm downloading that um, build that will allow me to save using authentication with the authentication options. But like I said, it doesn't do what I expect. It doesn't really prompt me for authentication. I don't know if that's already because I'm logged in or if it's just because I'm on a simulator. So if anyone knows in the comments, please let us know. So I'm opening it and I'm going to um, retrieve a value. There wasn't actually anything there for my key, so I set one instead. Now I'm going to retrieve that value. You can see that I could save the key now because I had added that um, config plugin and the um, info plist face ID description. Going to remove that now that we've sort of solved that problem. It's not really adding much benefit here because, like I said, it's not prompting me to authenticate. I'm not sure why. And I'm just adding a few more keys in here. So I've got a my key with my value. And I'm going to delete that key. So you can see there's nothing there for that. But if I look at my key one, I do have a value there for it. I'm going to go ahead and delete this app, remembering that we've got a value against my key one, but not my key. So now I'm going to go ahead and reinstall that app. And I'm also going to run it again. So because I've deleted it, I would typically not expect it to have values associated with it because I thought it would be a fresh install, but it does actually keep those values over the install. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today. If you have, please like and subscribe for more content or my code will be available on GitHub.